Your Royal Highness, thank you for your dedication to a sustainable future, for your commitment that is lasting, that is steadfast, and that is an inspiration to all of us. We present the ICCF Teddy Roosevelt International Conservation Award to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure for both um, my wife and myself to join you this evening, albeit briefly. And I, and I must say, coming back to the United States is always a, an enormous pleasure, and certainly to be met by such kindness, hospitality, and, and friendship is always uh, wonderfully encouraging. During his, his presidency, Roosevelt created five national parks, four game reserves, refugee, refuges, 51 national bird reservations, and 150 national forests, protecting in total approximately 230 million acres of public land. He set in motion a positive worldwide trend of enormous importance. Yet we see all too clearly now that uh, in the 21st century, nature is nonetheless in a serious state of decline. In today's testing times, I believe we need a renewal of the kind of far-sighted leadership uh, demonstrated by President Roosevelt. We need to move beyond uh, creating reserves set aside for nature to a new approach that places our relationship with the natural world much closer to the day-to-day -day concerns of humanity. The health of nature and the security of humankind are more inextricably linked than we sometimes realize. So it is essential to our well-being and ultimately to our survival that we address them together. I have sought then to advance this connection because I believe the primary challenge of our times is to find ways in which the natural systems and resources on which we depend can be sustained to support our needs indefinitely into the future while maintaining the incredible diversity of life on Earth. Despite the evident challenges, there are nevertheless signs that the seemingly insoluble conundrums can be effectively addressed in a number of areas. One of the greatest challenges and, and priorities, of course, is the establishment <clears throat> of genuinely sustainable fisheries at a time when so many fish stocks are in serious long-term decline. Since 2010, my ISU has been working to establish consensus on how best to rebuild stocks so as, among other things, to protect the livelihoods of coastal communities and to enhance food security. In the last year, ladies and gentlemen, my ISU has helped to convene a, a series of international conferences that for the first time address the linkages between the illegal trade in wildlife and both economic stability and national security. And again, if I may say so, it is enormously heartening that the United States is providing such great leadership in this area through addressing the threat of skyrocketing demand facilitated by organized criminals and in some cases terrorist groups for elephant tusks, rhino horn and tiger parts by creating a presidential task force and a national strategy on wildlife trafficking. It is clear that both parties are working well together to develop solutions to this most dire of problems. And I can only hope that the International Conservation Caucus will build <clears throat> on this very important work at home and overseas while continuing to integrate it into international assistance, uh, defense and security programs. Today, we are faced by truly exceptional challenges and threats. A veritable perfect storm, which, if not met by strong, decisive 
and far-sighted leadership could overwhelm our capacity to rectify the damage and thereby destroy our grandchildren's future inheritance. America's impact is profound, and it is my, and many others, fervent hope that you will continue to inspire others, both at home and on the global stage. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.